Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Does your warehouse waste time and money managing forklift batteries? Enersys can energize your operations with a customized solution, delivering the power you need while minimizing ownership costs. Enersys starts by analyzing your operations and then selecting from their comprehensive range of battery and charger technologies develops a truly optimized system tailored to your needs. Enersys gives you the power to increase productivity and profitability. See how Enersys puts power in motion for you at Enersys.com. With e-commerce off the charts, many small and growing warehouses are asking, how can I get ahead when my warehouse is barely keeping up? The answer is future-ready warehouse tech from Zebra Technologies. Warehouses can simplify and upgrade all processes, from automated inventory management to hands-free picking, with Zebra's tailored, scalable mobile solutions. They're simple and intuitive. There's never been a better time to upgrade for success with Zebra. How can your warehouse get ahead? The answer's in black and white. Get the answers at zebra.com slash the answer. That's zebra.com slash the answer. Businesses are retooling fulfillment operations from warehouses to omnichannel to meet new demand amid unprecedented labor shortages. 3PLs, retailers, B2B distributors, and others are turning to flexible fulfillment solutions like Six River Systems to adapt and scale. Six River Systems Fulfillment Execution System is an integrated solution that combines intelligent, cloud-based software and automation, including its autonomous mobile robot, AMR, Chuck. No costly or disruptive infrastructure changes, fast and easy associate training, and integrations with other warehouse execution solutions allow operations to meet labor challenges, increase efficiency, and enhance customer engagement. Go to www.sixriver.com to learn more. Go to www.the6river.com to learn more. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. On today's episode, I will be joined by Eric Nieves. He is the founder at Plus One Robotics, and Plus One Robotics is bringing 3D and AI-powered vision software to the industrial robotics community and helping those robots perform at a a higher level and being able to have that kind of hand-eye coordination. And we're going to talk to Eric about Plus One and why he decided to found Plus One and the, and the problem that he was seeing. And then we're also going to get into a recent partnership that they've come out with around the Modex time with Tompkins and how they're kind of taking Tompkins T-Sort solution to the next level. So, Eric, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm well, Kevin. Good morning. Glad to be with you and looking forward to talking about warehouses and robots. Always a fun day. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I think that's your every day, right? So, <laughs> so tell us a right. little bit it's about... A good life. <laughs> yes, definitely. And, and definitely an evolving mm-hmm. life, I'm sure, now as we saw that Modex robots everywhere. So, so tell us a little bit about Plus One and, and what it is that you, you guys do. Sure. So plus one is, you know, we build the software so that robots that otherwise would have been successful in an automotive assembly plant, for instance, Mm -hmm. can do meaningful work in the warehouse context, fulfillment centers, DCs, Mm -hmm. parcel sortation hubs, et cetera. And, you know, I'm an industrial roboticist. It's what I do. I'm doing this my, you know, entire adult life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for the better part of 30 years, every robot that, you know, we installed at Yaskawa, which was my 
a former employer and the mm -hmm. second largest robot company in the world, right. by and large was in manufacturing or in specifically the automotive sector. And the reason for that and the success that they had there is because everything was repeatable, mm. right? If I'm going to build a Honda Accord, I'm going to do it the same way every day for the next four years. And right. then I'm going to tweak some points and I'm going to do it the next, you know, for the next four after that. But uh, the warehouse is kind of orthogonal to that, mm -hmm. you know, sort of experience, right? In the warehouse, I don't know what's going to come down the line next. Mm. And I sure don't know what's going to come down the line in two weeks. Yeah. What I can be confident in is that it's going to be different than what came down two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? The only that in the warehouse is change. So when we set out to bring industrial robotics to the warehouse, we understood the first order of business is making them aware. You, they have to be able to see. Mm -hmm. And so plus one, you know, built a 3D vision stack that can look at whatever the cluttered pile is that happens to be in front of it right. and make sense of it and have the robot, you know, bring order out of chaos and pull one at a time off a pallet and put mm -hmm. it on the conveyor or pull one at a time out of the shipping container and put it on the, you know, extendo or pull one at a time at a time out of a big pile of parcels and put yeah. it on a sorting machine. All of that were the problems that we seek to solve. And plus one was formed around that premise, bringing vision mm -hmm. to those industrial robots for the specific applications that warehousing and DCs represent. Mm. Very interesting. And, and obviously, you know, you said there that, you know, the only constant is change in the warehouse, which is so true. And we see it not only just in the everyday of the warehousing work that is being done. And like you said, you know, packages are, are never the same size. It's unpredictable what people will order. I mean, we're, we're consumers, you and I, and, you know, today we might order shoelaces and, and tomorrow we might order a refrigerator online, right, to get delivered. So it, it's all over the place and, and the, the consumer is unpredictable, right? So, and robots, they, they like predictability typically, yeah. but what you're doing is is enabling that robot to be more flexible and as you said you know make order out of the chaos so so i'm curious as you know you founded the company and you know you're looking at this this problem and, and recognizing that you know the robots cannot necessarily or at the time could not necessarily handle this this constant change going on what really i guess kind of piqued your interest in in tackling this this solution and and getting involved in the the warehousing side of things yeah so i spent 25 years at yaskawa mm -hmm. the last six of which i was responsible for r d okay for the robot division and you know the most important number in the robot industry mm -hmm. is the sar the s-a-a-r the seasonally adjusted annual rate of okay. automotive sales in North America. Mm -hmm. That's how tightly coupled the robot industry is to the automotive sector. Mm, interesting. And when the SAR is at a certain level, about mm -hmm. 14 million, then all the robot companies are fat, dumb, and happy. Mm -hmm. When it drops before 14 million, uh, we have to start winning <laughs> each other's bids. <laughs> okay. to 2008, mm -hmm. the SAR wasn't 14 million. It wasn't 10. It wow. dropped off a cliff. Yeah. Right. And the industry found ourselves in the position we were having to send people home. Mm. And at that time, my CEO came to me. He's like, Eric, mm. we have got to find something else for robots to do mm -hmm. that isn't tied to the cyclicality of the automotive space space. Yeah. You know, what is that? Mm -hmm. And uh, between me and my colleagues in the marketing department, we turned over every frog every rock you can imagine, mm -hmm. right? Kissed a bunch of frogs, aerospace. We thought we mm -hmm. were going to go build triple sevens. Yeah. Cool job. Just don't build very many of them. Right. Uh, biomedical, clinical lab automation. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to touch sat lab, lab samples anymore. Let's go do that. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. It's just not very big. Mm -hmm. uh, at about this time, 2008, 2009, intuitive surgical is doing very well. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, maybe we'll all be making the next Da Vinci. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the IP around that is hairy and so is regular. Skip that. Yeah. So in the end, after all that exercise, mm-hmm. we found two things that mattered. Electronics assembly mm. and supply chain. Mm. Well, of those two, one of them isn't going to much matter in North America. All right. Even if we bring the chip foundries back, we're still not going to be making, you know, glowing screens and gadgetry in the U.S. It's still going to stay in Southeast Asia. But supply chain, by definition, is always local. Mm-hmm. So we were motivated to try to address the supply chain space. And we looked at that kind of broadly, and then we narrowed in on the DCs and the fulfillment centers and the sortation hubs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... You know, Yaskawa is a hundred year old Japanese industrial. It was exceedingly difficult to get a company that size to sort of pivot. And certainly at the velocity that the space is going to move. Right. So in the end, we chose to go our separate way and do it ourselves by forming plus one, Mm. you know, still have very good relationship with Yaskawa. They're some of our biggest supporters and, and our biggest partner in the robots that we deploy. Right. But here's the thing. If you go pick up your glasses or your keys off your desk, mm-hmm. you use your eyes, your arm, and your hand in that order. Mm. And what we, you know, as you think about it, the arm was where I came from. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Yaskawa and Fanic and ABB and Universal, that's what they, they build. Mm-hmm. So, the arm isn't the problem, right? You can get arms, yeah. but the value is going to accrue to the eyes and the hand, mm. the perception and grasping. If we were academics, yes, yeah. right. So that's what sort of motivated me to joining with Paul and Sean, my two co-founders from Southwest Research Institute, mm-hmm. to build out that perception capability and apply it to those same industrial robots and you know tackle these problems in the warehouse just a huge market opportunity there, Mm -hmm. you know, as big as the automotive sector is transportation and logistics is three X. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just growing even more rapidly. I mean, I think, you know, even, you know, being at Modex recently, you know, we look at just how, you know, I started going a pro mat in 2019 was the first time I went to one of those shows. And, you know, even just seeing the the growth in those couple of years in the technology and, and what people are, are bringing to the market just to try and support what is going on. This like explosion in fulfillment, e-commerce distribution is just insane. So so I, I'm curious from, from your point of view, you know, starting Plus One really kind of getting things going in, in 2017, you know, how, how have you seen the industry uh, evolve in that time and and how has Plus One kind of maybe evolved to, to keep up with that? We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. You know, when I started, you know, as an industrial automation guy, Mm -hmm. the first thing you do is you just sort of stand back against the wall and observe. Right. And as I, you know, did that, it, it became evident to me that, hey, inside the four walls of this facility, there's a, you know, a couple of different things happening. There's mobility. Okay. Somebody's on a forklift or pushing a cart or hauling a dolly or something. There's manipulation. There's people mm-hmm. with stuff in their hands right. and they're performing some task. Right. And then there's storage. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all three are being disrupted by tech. Oh, all yeah. three. That's all there is. It's mobility, manipulation, and storage. And every workflow is some combination of those things. Mm-hmm. And, 
the it could be as mundane as somebody with a clipboard, a cart, and racks. Mm. Right? Just walking up and down the aisle, checking off stuff on a clipboard, putting it on their cart, walking down, packing it out. Right. Uh, or it could be as sophisticated as AMRs mm -hmm. and picking arms like ours and Taurus. Mm -hmm. So robotics writ large is really trying to tackle all three of those elements, right? And, and the reasons are clear. You mentioned the, the growth is outpacing labor's capacity to keep up yeah, in absolutely. the warehousing space, mm -hmm. right? And so the only path forward is to make the people in the warehouse that much more efficient. Mm -hmm. And robotics is just a tool to enable them to increase volume and still hit, hit cutoff windows. Right. So I'm a manipulation guy. I'm not a mobility guy. Yeah. Right. So we built the vision system and tied it to the arm. And we do a lot of, you know, singulation, induction, mm -hmm. depalletizing to us at plus one, you know, kind of just as a thought experiment, we consider where are the piles of chaos that need mm -hmm. to be turned into ordered, you know, singulated yeah. flow. And the first place in our launch customer, big e-com company that we work with, they pointed us to the cross belt sorter. Okay. And said, Hey, you know, we have this high speed sortation machine and it's got, you know, eight lanes mm -hmm. of induction around it. Yeah. And people are having to load packages onto the induct belt to get, you know, loaded onto the, the sorter. Mm -hmm. And that's a less than desirable task to do for so many hours a day. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So we'd love to tackle this. And so we worked with them and that was sort of the first pile of chaos that plus one mm. brought our technology to bear on. Mm. But then we look around and we see pallets. A pallet yeah. is just another pile that just happens to be sitting on a, you know, 48 by 40 skid. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to get broken down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was an even less desirable job to have to do for six to eight hours a shift. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you have a few pallets, pallets yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your workday isn't measured in hours. It's measured in tons at that point. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So skip that. Let's have a robot do that job. Yeah. Again, taking what otherwise would have been manual tasking and having the robot supplement those efforts. So the sort of evolution of Plus One mm -hmm. has been finding the next application within the fulfillment center or the dc or the sortation hub okay. and applying our tech at the end of the day you, you know kevin there's what a hundred different manifestations of hand-eye coordination right oh, those yeah. people doing manipulation mm -hmm. <laughs> there's you know if there's a hundred there may be a thousand different you know applications for it and it's being sort of judicious as to which one to tackle next mm. and you know that's been an exciting you know, journey for the last five years. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to see how you guys have kind of gone from, you know, like you said, to basically, you know, one pile of chaos to the next pile of chaos and, you know, figured out the way to, to put that in order. And, and, and you touched on a good point there of taking away, you know, those tasks that are, are less than desirable. Right. And, you know, it's it, obviously it's, it's something that, you know, I think there's a, uh, there's always this kind of, conversation i think it's died down a little more as we've you know seen that you know robots are kind of the the future here in the space and and here to stay but there's always kind of that conversation of of taking away jobs in a sense you know when we look at automation yeah. and, and robots so so i'm curious you know you mentioned there you know obviously you know you're you're automating something that's less than desirable so so what's your what's your take on that kind of topic there on the whole robots versus jobs issue Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is true that mm -hmm. robots are really good at tasks. Yeah. Right. But robots make lousy employees. Okay? <laughs> yeah. 
Robots are good at tasks, not jobs. Mm-hmm. And and I'll you know think of it like this: if you are you know you're working as a you know pack out operator and you're you know stuffing boxes and labeling them and taping mm-hmm. them and such, um, sure you could conceive of a robot to do that, yeah. right? Let's say we have the robot you know doing it in the next aisle. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what happens when upstream has you know is blocked? Right. <laughs> right. You're starved of product. Mm-hmm. You know what the person's going to do? Mm. They're going to turn around and go, okay, well, let me prep my area. Let yeah. me get caught up on some paperwork. Let me go over here and help a colleague that's, you know, fallen behind or cover a break or something else. Mm-hmm. The person is going to find meaningful things to do. Right. Meanwhile, that robot is doing nothing. Yeah. Robots are completely unmotivated. <laughs> so they just make for lousy employees. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But it is true if you, as a person, you know, your, you know, day was consumed with this task and a robot came and could, you know, do that task for the six or eight hours a day, then you no longer have to. Mm-hmm. Robot one, person zero. Mm. There's no denying this. Yeah. Okay. But that's at the task level. Mm. Jump up to the enterprise level, meaning the facility itself. Okay. Okay. At the facility level, this person whose tasks were just automated by this, you know, piece of equipment now mm-hmm. did not go home. Mm. No robot deployed in a warehouse has ever resulted in a pink slip. Mm. Okay. Why? Because point to me any warehouse in the country that doesn't have a help wanted sign out front in perpetuity. Right. That yeah. warehouse doesn't exist. Yeah. Right. Very true. We yeah. were short of labor long before the robots came. Mm-hmm. And so, and that only got exacerbated, you know, through COVID mm-hmm. and, you know, sort of the explosive growth of e and, you know, home delivery and all of this stuff. So this person is now being reassigned to higher value work within the facility. Mm. And that's going to be things robots can't do. Right. Right. Robots are, you know, good at unloading, not so good at truck loading. Mm. Right. Yeah. Because if your job is to load the outbound, you're playing Tetris in 3D in real time. And some of the stuff you're dealing with isn't even rigid. Mm-hmm. Where am I going to put a beanbag chair right now? Right. <laughs> so that is the type of work that robots are years from solving, mm-hmm. but are hugely crucial tasks within the warehouse. So guess what? This person now has a higher value task and commands a better wage. Mm. And then if we jump up one more level from the facility or the enterprise to the economy writ large, yeah. That robot was a net gain Mm. because you've increased the throughput, the productivity of this, you know, facility in this sector. And what that means is it results in better service for us as the consumer, right? Mm. You talked about the sort of shortening of the delivery cycle all the time, right? right? We're demanding, you know, I can still remember how excited I was when we got to have two day delivery. Now that's like, meh. Right. So, you know, we get to enjoy better goods and services, you know, higher quality, lower prices, all of that stuff that comes from productivity. So, you know, robots versus jobs is a legitimate question, Mm -hmm. but we have to sort of decide at what is the appropriate level by which to judge, Mm. you know, sort of whether this was in fact good or, or not. And, I think net net, it was to the benefit because nobody went home anyway. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting perspective there, and it's certainly you know a conversation I've had on the the podcast multiple times because I think it, you know, it's a it's a reoccurring conversation, and I've seen it myself happen um, in my career where you know we've, we've started to bring in the robot for testing at some point, and, and the immediate reaction of employees is like, oh. Like that thing's going to take my job, it's, you know, and it's the same kind of thing. It's like, well, no, it's just going to take this task that, you know, you don't 
really like doing so much and yeah. and you know have you do something that's that's more meaningful so instead of and you know pushing a, a cart around you're actually going to go to to assembly and, and work on on things like that yeah, so, yeah. but this is why kevin mm-hmm. the company's called plus one robotics right because in our view it was never about person out robot in mm. right it was always about leverage Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, I try not to talk about automation. I try to talk about leverage mm. because automation conjures this notion of sort of the lights out warehouse, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> Where, you know, the product's all going to flow from inbound to outbound and nobody's going to be there. And, you know, isn't that mm. cool? That, that pipe dream isn't happening and it certainly isn't happening in the next 10 years. Yeah. Right? Mm. But we've already agreed there isn't enough labor anyway. Mm-hmm. So, what we have to do is take the labor we've got and make them three, four X more efficient. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been doing robots so long that I am a human exceptionalist. <laughs> I believe people are better than robots at everything. Okay. And certainly at 3D vision and decision making. Yeah. So if you take it as truth mm-hmm. that people want to be good at their job, mm-hmm. right? And I fundamentally believe that people yeah. want to be effective. And if I go to someone and say, you know, you've been doing a really good job on this, you know, induction task or whatever, and you've been doing, you know, 1500 packages per hour. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? I want you to be responsible for 6,000 packages per hour. Mm-hmm. That's going to be your job now. But yeah. the way you're going to do it is because I'm giving you a team of robots to manage. Mm-hmm okay, wait a minute, my life just got a whole lot better yeah. because that means I'm not doing the 1,500 packages per hour on my back, Mm -hmm. but I am managing a team. All of a sudden, my value and contribution to this operation has increased. I am now able to command better wages. You know, maybe I go from being a temp to -hmm. being a, you know, FTE, an actual employee of the of the facility Mm. and you know uh, everything that kind of goes with that so that's why the company's called plus one Mm. because the way those robots were effective was through the addition of one really motivated person right right and that's why you know our hashtag always has been robots work people rule Mm. the truth is it is the team of robots plus people Mm -hmm that's where the the magic happens mm. right so mm. yeah yeah very interesting and i you know i i, I love the the name too now uh, even more as you, you've explained it further and I, I think it makes total sense and it's obviously taking a lot of things to the the next level in the sense of of uh, enabling employees to to do more and and utilize their their mind more, I think in a sense is mm-hmm. in less of the the physical, which I think is a is a is a good thing. So so in terms of taking things to the the next level, now you guys have also partnered recently with Tompkins on their yeah. T sort solution. So so the T sort was in existence previously, as far as my mm-hmm. knowledge knows, and then and so now you're you're adding in your 3D and AI powered vision software to the t sort so so tell us about how that's kind of taking that that t sort solution to to the next level yeah so you know again if you kind of understand that workflows in the warehouse are a combination of mobility and manipulation and sometimes mm-hmm. storage then having a picking arm is cool and right. having an amr is cool but betterness happens when these things are working together Mm, right so the t sorts solve the problem of Mm. sort of modular scalable sortation okay and that's the reason that i really like what tompkins has built is because you can immediately determine hey i need to add x number more sort sort locations so let me add another section to the t sort let me put some more tiles on. Let me add another six robots to the surface. And now I've got another, you know, 12 or 18 sort locations, mm-hmm. just like that. And that scalability alone, I think, is hugely important as mm-hmm. the industry deals with 
seasonality, right? right? And growth. Mm -hmm. So I was intrigued by what Tompkins was building, but still there was a person having to load every one of those T-bots. Right, yeah. Right? So wait a minute. That means the growth that we're talking about is going to be sort of bounded by the availability of that labor mm -hmm. to, to, to do the loading. So, hey, let's tie our technology to the Tompkins technology. Okay. And what I loved about that was how straightforward that was because we both have sort of an API view mm -hmm. of the world and it was just pieces of software that needed to stitch together. Right. It was a light integration lift. And now all of a sudden, our robot is picking off the inbound feed, making again, looking at cluttered piles, picking mm. up apparel, picking up packages, whatever it is, and then dropping it off onto, you know, a couple of different locations on the T sorts and off they go and they do their own route optimization. Right. They do their own charging, all of that. I really liked this because mm -hmm. I didn't have to go create mobile robots, figure out how to deal with the traveling salesman problem, yeah. understand opportunity charging. All of that happened over there. Right. And they didn't have to figure out how to do 3D vision of cluttered piles, exception handling, all yeah. of that. And yet the two things were able to come together really pretty seamlessly. Mm. This sort of federation approach to the problems yeah. of the warehousing sector is, I think, where the real future is. Mm. I mean, there's two kind of approaches, right? right. I can either pick best of class components or, you know, subsystems and knit them together, yeah. which is the way that, you know, I do it. Mm -hmm. Or you got to build it all mm. from soup to nuts. I have to be mobility, manipulation. I got to do storage. There are other industry, there are other automation companies in the warehousing space that take the soup to nuts view. Right. It, it certainly is a viable alternative. It's mm -hmm. just not the one I believe is going to win in the end. You know, I think you pick and choose from amongst component pieces and you bring it together for the solution that makes sense for this context at any given time. Hmm. Yeah, it's a very interesting point there. And I, I think that, you know, the collaboration and, and partnerships, I think, is has been on on the rise. And I, I think that's from my opinion, and my perspective, I mean, I think that's a, a great thing for the industry because, you know, like you said, you can do the, the soup to nuts or, you know, you can partner with somebody who's who's doing something very well, but then add another layer to what they're doing and, and really help that solution evolve to, to the next level, like, which we, you guys have done with Tompkins. And, you know, I, I think that's the, the smart way to go about it, because even with, you know, the rapid pace at which we're we're growing i think you, you need to kind of collaborate and, and partner to to keep up with your you know keep your technology i don't know if relevant is the, is the right word but keep it it moving with the pace at which the industry is moving and i, I think you know partnering together is is certainly the the way to do that so so it's interesting that you you pointed that out and and you know definitely a great thing that you guys have partnered with tompkins and on the t-sort because as you mentioned you know there was it's a great solution but then in the the beginning part of the t-sort you still have the that human interaction that's, that's doing that repetitive mundane task which you guys are able to come in and and, and, and take away and, and be able to move that person as we talked about earlier to to a higher elevated type of position so so really interesting to to talk to you here eric and and kind of hear about the the evolution of of plus one and, and what you guys are doing now with the example with tompkins and it'd be interesting to see how things continue to to involve uh, evolve in the industry and how, how plus one is uh, involved in that so so i really appreciate you coming on the show today and, and and talking to us if people are interested in learning more about plus one how can they do that sure they can always go to plus one robotics.com mm -hmm. and one of the things that you know they'll see straight away is a live ticker mm -hmm. of the number of picks happening in the world using our technology at any given time oh wow. and yeah. it's about 1.3 million picks every single day wow the other place that you can learn about us is 
we have a very active presence and following on LinkedIn. Okay. And we are, you know, we engage with our audience for sure there. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you'll see us at Modex and at Automate and Pack Expo and Promat and in uh, actually in Europe at Logimat for mm-hmm. the first time. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, you can always you know follow us on Twitter. But if you're wanting to kind of dip your toe and understand what Plus One is doing, mm-hmm. definitely LinkedIn and the website will give you a great flavor. A lot of videos of case studies interviews with people that have deployed our tech successfully and such. But uh, there are 80 some odd folks now at Plus One. And seemingly uh, LinkedIn is the way that we communicate and engage with our customers and our partners the most. All right, great. And we'll put all that information at the new warehouse.com as well. So people can easily find it and connect with you, Eric and the Plus One team. So thank you again for your for your time today on the show. And it was great to learn about Plus One. You've been listening to the new warehouse podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at the new warehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from The New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.